All right, good day. Now we are going to discuss about the economics of information. We have here the law of supply and demand. Generally, if the demand is higher than the supply, then prices increase until demand equals supply. The economy growing is when there is a, an increasing demand or demand is increasing. Seasonal goods, demand increases at certain periods of time. But for peak buying periods, it happens when buyers purchasing activities increase. We have your pricing anomalies. Price wars are more likely in boom periods. Prices for food products with strong seasonal demand tend to decline at seasonal quantities peaks and rise during up peak periods. Retail sales occur primarily on weekends. Pre-Christmas markdowns tend to exceed post-Christmas markdowns. Another pricing anomalies is that of uh, spring of 1992, there is one full year of economic recovery. Kenny marker makers, supermarkets, hotel chains, car rental companies, and many other companies in a wide range of industries were still cutting prices. One executive said that the price cuts were to jumpstart demand. On June 1997, prices for leading soft drink brands fell 3 to 4% over past 12 weeks, despite a growing economy and the lowest rate of unemployment in 20 years. And in November of any year, there were, were 100 million turkeys will be sold, yet supermarkets promote lowest prices and lose money on every turkey sold. In this here, we can see average price change by day of week in terms of percent of price change by 100 lag price. This is uh, uh, scheduled on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, the entire week. All right, so we also have here a graph showing us number of price change by day of week in terms of uh, before Christmas and that of after Christmas. Average price change by day of week, okay, in terms of Thanksgiving week and the non-Thanksgiving week. Pattern of retail price changes. Prices fall as the weekend approaches. Prices peak on Mondays and fall as weekend approaches. Weekend effect is stronger during pre-Christmas period, and that's before Christmas. Pattern of retail prices changes. Weekend holiday interaction is strongest for Thanksgiving weekend. One third of all products ever marked down during observation period occurred Thanksgiving weekend. 22% of all price promotions occurred Thanksgiving weekend. Thanksgiving price promotions were three times normal promotional activity. We have 48 seasonal food products. Feature displays 7.7% in off-season, but 25.7% in peak season. Coupon intensity. 12.5% off season, but 30.2% in peak season. Significant increase in advertising during peak season for most products. Solve prices. Prices of 44 products declined significantly. Volume increased by 199% and prices fell by 7.5% during peak season. Price reductions ranged 3 to 15%. Price elasticity accounted for 33% of the seasonal demand increase. Thus, 134% of demand increased due to non-price factors. What are the possible reasons for observed pricing anomalies? One could be the tacit oligopoly collusion. This states that the price setters in a market in which there are a few large competitors are essentially pessimist. If one reduces price, the other competitors will much to reduce price, and there will be no substantial increase in sales volume for any seller. If one raises price, the other competitors will not follow, and the firm raising price will lose a substantial amount of its sales uh, volume. Another possible reason for observed pricing at all is that uh, shoppers search efficiencies. If one firm reduces price and customers of other sellers do not know of this reduction, then there will be a little increase in demand for the price reducing firm. If one firm raises price and its customers recognize the price increase, they will initiate a search for a better price quality relationship and switch to another seller. 
another possible reason for observed pricing anomalies is that of uh, informative advertising. Sellers increase their information advertising, reaching more interested buyers, thereby reducing per customer advertising costs. The increase in advertising and promotion leads sellers to perceive that buyers are more price sensitive. Consequently, sellers believe that price reductions are necessary to sell to these buyers. Another possible reason for observed pricing anomaly is that if the seller can capture these buyers, they will recognize the value they have received, will become loyal, and market share will increase permanently. However, would not each seller anticipate the rivals to be thinking uh, similarly? If all sellers reduce prices during peak demand, would profits be enhanced? Failure to think strategically. The answer to both questions is no. People find it difficult to think strategically. Look ahead and reason back, and then the competitor's mindset. Firms do not do careful and going competitive research, information gathering, or analysis. Firms do not careful or do not do careful and going price research, information gathering, or analysis. Do buyers learn to experience? Do buyers increase search activity? Learn where the best values are become more price sensitive? You have limited cognitive time, energy, and monetary resources. Limited ability to remember details of previous purchase and use experiences. Information integration difficult and to subject to error and bias. Now, failure to understand buyer behavior. Buyers do not understand uncertain quality and misuse quality information. A few buyers do make good decisions, 84%, and some others do learn to make better decisions, around 7%. However, most buyers use room decision rules and do not learn around 62%. Consequently, confused buyers are around 9%. Maybe Stigler's model. According to Stigler's model is that the quality of products offered by rival sellers is equal. Once a buyer samples a seller, all relevant information about the firm's product is summarized by the price. Price dispersion is a given initially and the buyer knows the distribution of prices this price dispersion may diminish or even disappear if price information is quickly disseminated by buyers to others or sellers open and advertise their prices. Thus, price dispersion is due partially to buyer ignorance. The buyer decides how many stores to sample and selects the lowest price available from those sellers. Another is that uh, according to Stiglitz model, the buyer's maximum price or the reservation price she is willing to pay is determined by the lowest price she encounters. There is no minimum acceptable price. Sixth thing about Stigler's mode is that the expected benefits from a search are related positively to the extent of the price dispersion. Seventh is that the extent of search is related negatively to the cost of search. Eight, the gain from search decreases with continued search. For example, there are diminishing returns to search. Nine, the greater the expense expenditure on the product or service, the greater the return on the search. Therefore, there will be more search for higher price products. Tenth, the more search a buyer undertakes, the lower will be the average price paid. According to Nelson's contribution, quality varies over sellers for similar products. Buyers may learn about quality through search, experience, or not at all. The more information buyers have, the more price-sensitive, elastic they will be. Search attributes can be evaluated before purchase. Buyers may be more aware of the substitutes. Sellers will likely imitate or copy successful features. There will be more similar substitutes. Gross price elasticity will be relatively high. Examples, we have dentist fees, air travel, TV picture quality, audio system sound. Okay, we have also experience attributes that can be evaluated only after purchase. Buyers may be less aware of substitutes. Sellers will be less able to imitate or copy successful features. There will be fewer and less similar substitutes. Gross price elasticity will be relatively moderate. Examples of food taste, cancer performance, dry cleaning, hair permanent. Credence attributes usually cannot be evaluated after receipt and use. Buyers are not able to compare or evaluate alternatives. Sellers will be more likely to customize offerings. There will be fewer and less distinctive substitutes. Cross price elasticity will be relatively low. Examples will be legal advice, tax advice, and healthcare. 
Now, what are the implications for bias search behaviors? For search products, the incremental cost of search are the out-of-pocket costs of transportation and information and access fees, plus the opportunity cost of time of finding and evaluating another product. Another implication for bias search behavior is that for experienced products, the incremental cost of search are the cost of obtaining price information and access costs, or the cost of obtaining product and supplier information. Another implication for bias search behavior is that of cost of misfit. The difference in satisfaction received between the best product found after sampling some of the products and expected average satisfaction received if only one product was chosen at random. What are issues about buyer search? One is the extent of the buyer search and the nature of the research behaviors. Second, amount and nature of information that buyers and sellers have deepers. Third, pricing decisions based on assumptions may not reflect how buyers and competitors may actually behave. Additional questions on price search. Buyers' knowledge about products and market conditions, such as, okay, we have here expertise, habit, relative brand uncertainty, social returns from the search and shopping activity, ability to remember prices of products, nature and extent of buyer search. One is the pre-store against in-store search. If determinant attributes are search attributes, then advertising is effective. If determinant attributes are experienced attributes, then various forms of in-store shopping is more effective. Sequence of price information. If sequential prices continue to be lower, the buyer will continue to search. If they are continuously higher, the buyer will stop the search and return to the first product. If they are random, the buyer will be uncertain about continuing or discontinuing the search. Now, what are the reasons for sellers mispricing? If participants were ignorant of market conditions, prices would change slowly. If participants were aware of market conditions, prices do not change and demand exceeds supply. One implication is that buyers prefer to consume some products or services as part of the crowd. Second, under pricing, some product is preferable to only allowing certain higher income buyers having access to them. Third, buyers' cost of waiting is low relative to sellers' cost of adjusting prices. Fourth, increasing prices might seem unfair. Now, the question is, do managers misread buyer search? Curious suggest that markets are comprised of two segments of buyers. A segment who actively searches for price information or price vigilance and a segment who doesn't search. The price vigilance will know when price differences are inconsistent with quality differentials and when market conditions change. If the price vigilance segment is sufficiently large, demand for a solar's products will be relatively more price elastic. Now, here's a summary. Information has a strategic value. Research on the role that price information Based in buyers' behaviors is necessary for firms.